Now time for member statements. The member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. Long-term care is not the only humanitarian disaster unfolding in Ontario. Homelessness was in crisis before COVID, and now it is a public health nightmare. Folks like Michael Eschbach are falling ill to COVID because they can't self-isolate. They are terrified, forced to sleep rough or in tents if they don't want to be in shelters that are petri dishes for COVID-19. Shelters, respite centers, drop-ins are maxed out. No one can self-isolate. The government has refused to explicitly include frontline shelter and drop-in workers in the wage top-up, so they continue to work multiple sites, potentially carrying the infection with them, precisely why COVID exploded in long-term facilities. There is still no universal testing across the shelter system, so the infection continues to spread. When shelter users are kicked out for the day, they share public spaces, including transit with essential workers, contributing to the community spread that is preventing Ontario from opening safely. Clearing encampments without offering people hotel rooms where they can self-isolate contravenes United Nations and CDC guidelines, but cities do it anyway because they don't have enough hotel rooms. Cities are overwhelmed. The province needs to step up and provide the money and logistics for hotel rooms for all Ontario's unsheltered people. This is a nightmare that is about to become worse. People who have lost their jobs, who can't pay their rent or arrears, are going to swell the ranks of the homeless, and Bill 184 actually makes it easier for landlords to evict tenants mid-pandemic. The government needs to fix this now. Member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to take this opportunity to say how absolutely humbled I am to represent the riding of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. I continue to be inspired by the exceptional kindness of so many individuals in this very challenging time. And like so many here across the aisle and here, my heart is broken as I witness the hardships, the pressure this pandemic has caused for so many people to so many businesses. I know my team has worked tirelessly to answer questions and provide resources and assistance to families, businesses, and individuals in our ridings. And my peers, my colleagues in this House, have demonstrated tremendous leadership, engaging with stakeholders and ensuring that we're accessing and working with all the professionals in advice and making the best possible decisions with the information we have. As I consider my riding as a snapshot of ridings across this province and across this country, though, I am hopeful in our future. And I tell you, it certainly won't be easy. I think we all recognize that reality. But we are resilient. We recognize the value of hard work, the power of information and innovation, and the spirit of cooperation. And I'm confident, I remain confident, and I am confident, not only in our systems, but in our members and in our representation and all of our supporters, that we as Canadians, we as Ontarians, that we can and we will move forward together. Thank you and God bless. Member statements. The member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, the Canadian Armed Forces released a report on the state of the five long-term care homes that they were de deployed to because of the coronavirus. And what the Canadian Armed Forces uncovered was unspeakable. I can't imagine how families and their loved ones in long-term care are feeling, how they are processing this information, and how they must be filled with worry and, quite frankly, disgust. My office heard from Lindsay that her mother-in-law shared a room with someone who had tested positive for COVID and the long-term long care facility for profit didn't know what to do in that instance and it took days before she was removed uh, from that room with someone sh that she was sharing. We cannot allow this government to express outrage with words of anger on the failings of what's happening. And they're part of that. There's many governments that are at fault here. But what we need to do is we need to make sure we can take action. We need to make sure we can get inspections back on track, take over all long-term care homes that are not safe, and call this government to put a full, independent, transparency inquiry. It's a find and fix. It doesn't mean that they can't make interim changes that will actually help families and their loved ones suffering in, in long-term care now. They've been suffering under the, the coronavirus, and they have been suffering before. We need to make sure we do the right thing. This is our opportunity. I call on this government for a full public independent inquiry. Thank you. The member for Markham Thornhill. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Throughout this challenging time, we have all witness incredible act of kindness 
generosity and compassion in our communities. Ontario frontline healthcare professionals deserve our thanks for their sacrifice and determination to saving lives, defeating this disease. Like other frontline medical professionals, my wife is a medical doctor. I admire her courage and commitment to her patients every morning she leaves the house for work. In my riding of Markham Thornhill, I receive phone calls almost every day from doctors, nurses, personal support workers, and other frontline staff. I know we say it every day, but we cannot say it enough. These people are our heroes. Mr. Speaker, there is, a, there is also many ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I have worked with the community donors, not just in Markham, but across the GTA, to deliver the face masks, meals, and other essential supply to those most in need. Mr. Speaker, I want to say thank you to the generous support from STI Supply, Exact Imaging, Clear Lynn, Peter Zhu, Suon Academy, Paria Trillium Foundation, the Islamic Society of Markham, and Indo-Canadian Community for your efforts. The kindness you have shown to your fellow Ontarian during this time is an example to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kishkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Mr. President. Thank you, Speaker. Small municipalities in the north face devastating fiscal situation. While they all have limited fiscal capacities, small towns must face new COVID expenses and keep up with infrastructure that cannot be shut down. Moussigny, for example, continues to operate main airport of the James Bay in spite of having lost most revenues. And they must keep the airport alive because they serve medical, flood, forecasting, and cargo operations. Also, most northern municipalities have taken relief action. Hearst, for instance, paused the tax increase while facing a revenue loss of a quarter million dollars between mid-March and April. And other towns have weave interests and penalties offered payment deferrals or service rebates to small businesses. Speaker, not long ago, the Premier said he won't spare a penny to help the people of Ontario. Families, people, and workers depend on northern small, a northerner, small towns, service, and infrastructure. The Premier needs to stick to his word and offer direct finance aid to northern municipalities before it's too late. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Mr. Speaker, and uh, this pandemic has been hard on families across this province, especially those families in long-term care, those families who have someone who's sick and being treated in hospital, someone who's chronically ill. And uh, there's some risks in this pandemic where we may lose something that's really important, uh, lose our humanity. And one of the things we're at risk of losing is the role of essential family caregivers and the role that they play that, to keep their loved one well, to sometimes feed them, to sometimes bathe them, to sometimes avoiding medical accidents, to ensure that they get the care that they need. Essential family caregivers are just that. They're essential. They're not visitors. And when I read the story of Leonard Rodriguez this week, where his wife was not allowed to come into the emergency room with him, even though he was desperately ill, and then he was sent home, I wondered if she had been there, would he have been sent home? And that's happening across this province in hospitals and long-term care. This government needs to have a plan to bring essential family caregivers back into health care situations. It needs to be part of our pandemic plan because simply it's better for patients, it's safer for them, and it's the human thing to do. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From the onset of the outbreak of COVID-19, the government of Ontario has taken significant steps to curb the spread of this virus and to reduce its impacts on the health of Ontarians and our economy. During this time of crisis, volunteers and organizations from Brampton West and Brampton have rallied to provide support for vulnerable people in society. Organizations like Night Stable Brampton, Khalsa Aid, Regeneration Outreach, United Six, Canada India Foundation, Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, 
my Indians in Canada Association, Care for Cause, Punjabi Food Seva, Mississauga and Brampton, Thapliyal Foundation and other similar organizations and their volunteers are working very hard to keep people and families safe, fed and socially supported during the COVID-19 pandemic. Such organizations and their volunteers are stepping up to ensure that food can reach Bramptonians who need it the most. Today, I take this opportunity to stand here in this house to acknowledge the efforts of these volunteers, our heroes out there in Brampton, Ontario, and across Canada who are supporting communities every single day by ensuring that no one goes hungry during these trying times. I salute these unsung heroes and want to reiterate that we are all in this together and hope is on the horizon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to share my concern with this House and directly with the Premier about the future of the church in Wellesley Village. The village is more than just a neighbourhood. It's a living, breathing testament to the strength and resiliency of queer and trans communities. It's a gathering place for 2S LGBTQ plus people seeking refuge, a place to be themselves, a place to build community, and to organize for queer and trans rights. The village was already suffering from skyrocketing rents before COVID-19 even started. It was forcing many of our beloved queer and trans-owned businesses to close their doors before the pandemic even started. Over the years, we've lost Zippers, The Barn, Fly, Byzantium, Slacks, Fire, Zeldas, Five, Babylon, Slack Alice, The Barracks, The Club, Richmond Street Health Emporium, Roman II Health and Recreation Spa, and most recently since COVID-19 started, Club 120 and many, many more are at risk because of the failure, because of the direct failure of both the provincial and federal governments to come to the table with meaningful supports for this community. The only rent relief program being offered right now relies on commercial landlords to opt in, which they are not. Premier, the village needs commercial rent subsidies. We need a ban on commercial evictions, and we need a real plan that's going to support queer and trans communities. Premier, it takes a village to save the village, and I'm asking you to join us today and commit to the supports that our community needs. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the fight against COVID-19, the residents of Scarborough Rouge Park have been more resilient than ever. I want to recognize the incredible work by our neighborhood groups and organizations, such as Centennial Community Recreation Association, West Rouge Community Association, Highland Creek Community Association, Muslim Welfare Canada, Enforce Foundation, Feed the Community Scarborough, and the National Council of Canadian Tamils. My team and I launched the Spread Kindness campaign when a senior contacted me asking for, asking for immediate support in providing groceries such as milk, bread, fresh fruits and vegetables for 120 senior units in his apartment building. These seniors have been self-isolating and running low on food supplies. With the support of local business owners, the T. Auto Coalition and Allied Community Legal Services we bought groceries for the entire senior building. Since then, we are continuing to spread kindness to hundreds of seniors with the help of many businesses, including Petro Canada and Giant Tiger. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all the community leaders and volunteers who generously offered to join hands to support our seniors during this challenging time. Scarborough Ruchpa community is standing, standing together Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for Scarborough Rouge Park and apologize for getting his writing name wrong. Member statements. The member for Oakville North, Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Since the beginning of the pandemic, people in my community of Oakville North, Burlington have stood firmly behind our frontline health care workers and other essential workers. They are keeping us safe and keeping us healthy. With sirens blasting and horns blowing, police, firefighters and paramedics regularly parade by our local hospitals, Joseph Brandt and Oakville Trafalgar, showing their support. And the community has joined in by clapping for our health care workers from their front porches. Businesses stepped up donating PPE, Walker's Chocolate, Habitat for Humanity, Madame Homes, 
Grasshopper Energy, GEOP, and all others have given thousands of masks. The Oakville Chinese Community Response Fund has raised $30,000 in just two days. The beer store collected empties and donated the money. And we are keeping our food banks like Food for Life Halton going. With Global Medic, we delivered 600 pounds of food to the Salvation Army and Oak Park Neighbourhood Centre. Local restaurants such as Senor Frango, The Lockside and Returno made meals for our healthcare workers and those in need. And the famed snowbirds flew over our local hospitals to help boost the morale of our healthcare workers. And to top it off, friends celebrated Julie, a six-time gold medalist at the Special Olympics, with a drive-by birthday parade. This is the Halton spirit on display. This is the Ontario spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.